The average Class 8 truck gets less than 6 miles per gallon. Joe Morrow gets 11, fully loaded. Joel, tell us about this purple truck right here. This is Purple Haze 2. It's the latest generation VNL. It is the iTorque spec, which is aggressively downsped. It is a 500 1950 D13 TC. And this is an 11 mile a gallon truck. Hi, I'm CCJ editor Jason Cannon, and in this video, I'm talking with Joel to learn how he gets such impressive fuel economy. And for more fuel efficiency tips and trucking industry news, sign up for our newsletter using the link below. So it used to be that everything was absolutely speed related. In order to achieve that type of fuel efficiency, you were driving 55 mile an hour. It's just the way it was. With today's advanced aerodynamics, and you can see how slippery this truck is, we have the ultra low rolling resistance Michelin rubber on this, which absolutely helps. And then the downsped powertrain. This downsped powertrain, also known as Volvo's iTorque system, combines the D13 TC engine I shift transmission with adaptive gear shifting and low rear axle ratios to achieve high torque at low RPM. And so at 65 mile an hour, we're running about 900 RPM. Um, and it'll, it'll huff 80,000 pounds right down the road with no problem at 900 RPM. Lower RPMs alone don't guarantee greater fuel efficiency, but Volvo's iTorque system keeps the VNL in its optimal RPM range, even at higher speeds, which maximizes fuel efficiency. So we're achieving that 11 miles a gallon at a much higher speed, even with heavier weights. So you've got a lift axle. When do you raise it? When do you lower it? How does it work? So the, the truck knows. It, it, it figures out, okay, I'm legal to lift the axle. We also have a lift axle on the trailer on this particular truck. Generally, if I'm under 15,000 pounds in the trailer, I'm gonna have two axles up. Even if you're loaded all the time to the point where you can't get them off the ground with a payload, going to get those loads, you can really help drive your fuel efficiency up. Joel says the key to the truck's lift axle performance lies in its midship placement, combined with a high capacity front axle and weight biasing suspension. We have a high capacity front axle. This is a 14,600 pound rated steer axle. And we have to have that high rating because I have a weight biasing suspension with a lift axle midship. And that means that we optimize the weight that goes to the steer axle and the drive axle. When we optimize weight up front, it improves ride, it improves handling, um, especially when it's wet or in the snow. So we go midship here, and this is the lift axle, and obviously you can see it's off the ground right now. This is kind of the, the secret sauce to the, the whole six by two concept. In the past, we always had a dead axle six by two where the drive axle was actually in the front, the dead axle was in the back, and it didn't lift off the ground and that created all kinds of traction issues and handling issues. This has tractive potential on par with a six x four um, with significantly better fuel efficiency. I typically see about a half mile a gallon increase in fuel efficiency with this axle arrangement versus the standard six x four. And when the lift axle on the trailer is raised too, Joel says he gains another three quarters of a mile per gallon, bringing the total fuel savings to roughly 1.25 miles per gallon when both axles are off the ground. Beyond the truck's technology, a large part of Joel's strategy is time and speed management. So the internet's full of skeptic. They see all these numbers and they say, Joel, you're never, you never drive anywhere, you never haul anything. What's an average week look like for you? <laughs> so I'm downhill both ways. No. Right, yeah, it's, it's, that's always the case. I know, that's, this is what we hear. And you're only driving 45 mile an hour, and, which neither are true. So we're running general freight off the load board just like most owner operators are. Um, nothing is really cherry picked and we're, we're hoofing it down the highway a lot of times. When we can drive 58, we'll drive 58. When we have to drive 72, we'll drive 72. We do manage our speed and time. We just don't set the cruise at 72 everywhere we go for the sake of running 72. When it makes sense to run slower, we run slower. When it makes sense to run faster, we do that, and we make that decision based on each individual load. There's no magic number on speed, and that's why we have the gearing in this truck, so when I have to run 72, at least I can do it efficiently. Joel is still looking to increase his fuel mileage, and his main strategy for improvement is further lowering his rear axle ratio, which currently sits at 216. I think I'm gonna push that rear axle ratio down to 205. And I think that 205, not only is the engine gonna turn 35 or 40 less RPM than the 216, 
but it's going to enable us to pick up some more of that kinetic energy, that free money while we're going down the road where the truck will roll. Best guess, I'm thinking we're looking at three tenths to a half mile a gallon, better than what this is going to top out at on the next version. For smaller carriers looking to boost their fuel efficiency without buying the latest tech, Joel has some simple advice. So many guys, especially the owner operators, they're out here for the lifestyle. They don't necessarily see it as a business. When you see this as a business, you start to understand how important it is to manage your speed and your time and do what's appropriate for the situation. Understand this is a business and be open-minded and willing to do what's right for your business.